Alright, I'm gonna be playing some Diablo 4, it's a bit earlier in the day. But, I'm gonna open up with this today, because I feel like just uh, going around and uh, doing some more things here. Anyway, if you're watching later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Hope you've been enjoying so far. And, uh, yeah. Let me just get this map on screen and let me see what I'm up to. Uh, probably gonna go around doing dungeons today. As I don't think there's a world boss going on, so... Let's see if there's any dungeons as favors. Or whispers, I should say. Doesn't look like it. Alright. This one has three dungeons missing. All right, here. Yeah. I did a world boss uh, during lunch, so I got like a replacement for this. Kind of neat. Even on just popping in before you go to bed. Alright, no worries. Appreciate that. I'm, yeah, I'm doing alright. Just uh, kicking back. Ooh, another quest that I was missing. Alright, cool. Yeah, since this, this is like kind of the quiet hour, I decided to play this before I do all the stuff. Weapon of the Wolf. Alright. Marking that quest is done. But damn, that... Alright, well... I'm out of fury. I guess I got no more favors to turn in. I'll go do the dungeon first and I'll come back out. Alright, I'm gonna mark. This one is done. I'm 
Happy birthday again. Oh man. Or oh, anniversary. Has it stopped showing that message us or is this just a meme? It's a meme, isn't it? This is going to be the new happy birthday on Twitch, isn't it? Oh man. You know how insignificant that affiliate anniversary thing is? It's like, it's locked. a year's gonna pass and I'm gonna completely forget. It asked to show the message, it's still doing it? Okay. Because it started doing it like two days ago. Um, anyway, thank you. I do appreciate any sort of well wishing, however, the thing we're celebrating ultimately when it comes down to it is like, hey, happy uh, anniversary of the day that Twitch started paying you and taking 50% of your earnings. Um, and yeah, the way that I got affiliate, it, when I started streaming the affiliate program wasn't a thing at all. And then one day out of the blue, I go to stream and I'm like, oh, I have a subscriber button now. Oh, I have emotes now. What happened? Oh, they have this new thing called the affiliate program. And then that was it. But I don't know when it happened. And whatever. Here we are six, seven years later. And now they're highlighting it as like a big deal. I'm, go I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget. Straight up 100% going to forget. In a year's time, this message is going to appear and I'm going to be like, oh yeah, right, that thing. And, uh, yeah. Cool. That'll be it. I'm on Diablo for a bit. Not long. It's just during this period where it's a bit more quiet since, uh, Americans are going to bed and Europeans haven't quite woken up yet. So before we get to the evening stream, I just want to grind a bit more. Lazy days, just miserable here in Melbourne. Just cold, alternating between cold and rain, and it's dark outside. So I just got my responsible adult stuff done, and just yeah, here I am. So much shit here. Those lot beam of light that keeps stunning me. It's a bit of a weird one, that one. Now, the cynic in me wants to think that the reason they launched this feature is because it's launching simultaneously with the. Uh, the thing that mimics YouTube's super chat thing. But I don't know. I didn't apply? No, I didn't. It was just enabled. It was very different back then. Like, it was kind of just... I mean, okay, no. To be fair, I had to fill in an agreement. Like, it just popped up in my dashboard, and it was just like, oh, if you want to get paid, this is what you need to do. But I do remember that, like, um, I got the emote slot, and then the button was there, but no one could do anything with it. From memory. I just know that I automatically qualified. That's, that's about it. I didn't have to do anything. Like, obviously, to get paid, you need to do the whole, uh, fill in forms shit. But I believe they had the option to, like, skip the, uh, 
the whole nomination of like a bank account and all that process. Because if you did, if you thought that you wouldn't earn that much, it was like you can skip it for now until uh, you do start earning enough, and Twitch will hang on to the money until then. So that's what I opted to do. I just wanted the emote slots because people were wanting emotes. Things are probably different now, but yeah. Initially, that's what it was. super chat thing only for partners I to be honest I haven't really looked into it beyond the announcement that I saw just pop up on my feed probably if I was to take a guess I mean if you don't see anything here it's either a it hasn't launched or b I have to enable it or potentially it's just for partners You have 20% increased crowd control duration. While enemies are unstoppable, you deal damage to them. Interesting. Don't see it here, but you've seen it in other places. Yeah, maybe... I mean, take note of where you've seen it next time. Like, like I said, um... If it's something I have to enable, I'm not enabling it. And if it's something where it automatically gets enabled, I'm going to try and disable it. That's just my stance on it. I don't have enough it's not that I'm against the feature, it's that, I, you know, I just... Keep your money. <laughs> That's what I keep saying. I do appreciate the thing, but, you know... Yeah, I'm gonna opt to hide it. Don't, don't worry. It's not something you'll see here. If I can help it, it's not something you will see here. I'm not trying to make a living out of this, so... Unless that changes one day. It look, I thought it but said Mace Knight's Journal. I'm like, what's a Mace Knight? But it was Mace that. and the Knight's Journal. The room were completely corrupted, so there is nothing good in this place. The church should have raised this unholy den long ago.
So there's something wrong with my headset. It's like... I leave the batteries charging, and without question, they're 100% charged, but then when they go in the headset themselves, it's like, no, they're not charged, and then I gotta plug it in, and then I leave it plugged in for a few minutes, and then when I unplug it, it's like, oh yeah, no, they're charged. town real briefly. Whirlwind periodically pulls enemies to you. Yeah, I'm sure that's a nice whirlwind build. Not interested in that. I'm going salvage. So one thing I have seen when it comes to uh, builds, people seem to be foregoing the uh, putting points into attacking. Which is interesting. There's a jeweler on this map. Ow. There. Oh, it goes to level 5. Right. Okay, I guess that's the difference. Well, still. of the wolves were ready when they hear you found it. You have done us a great service. Okay.
Where is next dungeon? Oh yeah, I need to go visit the tree first. Hold up. Just checking my map as well. It is dumb. Uh, two hand weapons, why not? Jeez, this one... This one is better. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, from a stat perspective, it's not like... I'm struggling, but... Okay, I'm going to this one next. Apparently there's a quest inside this one. Thing got in the way. the warden's key and there's gonna be dead bodies so I need to loot them because there'll be a quest Thing where oh wow, I already found the warden. I don't have enough. How does the bar feel? I mean, skills feel nice. It's just a bunch of times where it just feels like. The game is telling you to go fuck yourself for picking a melee class. But other than that, it's fun. Yeah, I'm not chasing that. I'm good.
first time you've seen Noah watch someone who played Beyblade. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really look at what was meta or what was in build, so I just kind of went with something I thought would be fun. Just screaming and just uh, making things explode with the hammer, and it's been fun. Especially when things just get stunned or like almost one shot. In some cases, one shot. It's fun in a group sense as well when you pull shit to you. Alright, Animus. I might need to move my passive stuff around a bit. I think now... I see that my fury generation is a lot better than it used to be, so I might even be able to take the uh, the ability that causes the hammer to do a lot more damage, but at the cost of more fury. I just need to get the. The glyph that reduces my scream cooldowns. How does Fury not go down? Um, because I'm constantly yelling and it's generating more. So when I take damage, it just goes back up. So that's why I'm just running around from target to target, because I want shit to hit me. And I got frenzy because that attacks quickly. And then the rest is just going into fortification so I don't go down easily. Once I get that stuff where my screams is going to start getting better cooldowns, so that's when it'll start shining. Do I heal back from skills or potions? Uh, 20 life per second for each close enemy, up to 116 life per second. And then, you know, it's applying fortify and shields and all that shit, so... It's like, from that it kind of just goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and then... I use potions as well. I'm happy that the character's in a good spot, because this is just me guessing without looking at what uh, what other people are doing, really. Seems to work. Ah, this asshole's over here. but okay. Not ready. 
I think it's tied to the yell. I mean, the other thing is I kind of just used the knowledge I had from Dather and I'm like, you know what, I bet they haven't gone to the point of designing too many original builds. I bet you, like, what used to be done with Hammer of the Ancients in D3 is going to be more or less the same. So. I didn't find the body. I need to go look around because there's a quest in this dungeon. that done. I mean, I would just class this game as like a better version of D3. But I think it really, really needs to make some changes quickly or people are going to lose interest sooner than you think. I think... After, you know, the novelty of, uh, that this is a new game and finally we have Diablo 4, people are already starting to realize, hmm, the dungeons, whilst there's a lot of them, you're really doing one of 12 objectives every time. And it's just very, very, uh, cookie cutter. Which is fine for now, but if they, like, you know, in a few months... It's still like this. People are going to lose interest in this because it's just like... It just feels like I'm doing bounties again. And it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with bounties, but... Given the, the amount of years I played Diablo 3, it's like, dude, I'm, I'm burnt out on bounties. Like, at a certain point, I get sick of them quicker than, than usual. It's like, sure, they might appear anywhere in the world now, and... They... They're definitely a step up from what we had in D3, but ultimately this is this is bounties and uh, it's that over and over again. So if like the, the first season launches and they haven't really introduced some new gameplay mechanic or like new things to do or it's just kind of like this again, but it's a season, I'm probably going to skip it. I mean, already I'm kind of just playing this whenever I feel like it. It's not like an everyday thing by any means. It's a good foundation. They just need to move quickly now. I don't see any bodies. I need to find a body to loot stuff off. Yeah, I don't know. For me, the updates are going to be like a wait and see. Because if the core is basically this, I don't see myself coming back to this that often. Like, it needs to evolve beyond the, the bounty formula. You could add all the new skills in the world, and new classes, but if you're having to spend 150 hours, which is what they're saying to get to level 100, it's like roughly 150 hours to completely level up a character, and you have to do this for the 150 hours, I'm, I'm not gonna do it again, most likely. 
Even if there are new classes, it's just like, that can't hold my, my attention for that long. Just because, yeah, did so much of this sort of stuff in D3. Are there really no bodies to loot in this dungeon? The biggest fix is more stash spaces. Eh, I don't know. I think the biggest thing they can do to this game is add variety. Again, it's like, let's say they add more stash spaces. Let's say they add new characters, but then fundamentally it's 150 hours of bounties every time. That's the biggest problem in my eyes. It's just like the gameplay loop will become stale. It's just for some people it'll be quicker than others, that's all. I would rather them not waste time on little things like that. That It's like, yeah, it's an annoyance, but it's not the biggest problem this game has. Am I reading this right? It says... Inside a dungeon interact with dead bodies. Okay. Oh, there's one. Jeez. Okay, it's not that. Like, right now, I'm trying to get all the quests and dungeons done, and the track- like, I'm using an external tracker because the map in-game is just bad. Like, you don't have a list of which quests you d you're done with, so you don't have a reference as to, okay, what am I missing? And, you know, you read guides and they say, like, you know, take the name of any place, it doesn't matter what it is. The quest let's say the, re the quest refers to the Emperor's Temple. Okay, cool. Where on this map is the Emperor's Temple? Oh, what's that? The map doesn't actually name locations, so you, unless you specifically remember the name and where it actually lies on this gigantic map, you're not going to find it. There's, there's so many problems with this, but I think the biggest problem they need to fix is just... It can't just be bounties over and over again and 12 ob objectives for dungeons. That has to change before the end of the year, or I just, uh, I don't think I'll come back to this game. It'll be like Diablo 3, it'll be like when, whenever a, f a friend of mine is like, hey, we should play Diablo, then I'll play it, but otherwise it's just, I can't sit through 150 hours of bounties and just 12 dungeon objectives. I came here to purge this evil, but now... I can't leave my friends here. Not like this. We... We can't do it alone. Well, let's see if I'm good enough to pull this off or if it's like... Another one of these masteries that is just... A fool's errand when it comes to single player. Fool's errand it is. Yeah. It's almost like this doesn't work for multi I mean single player at all. Like you have no problem surviving, but there's just no chance you ever get this objective done. If this game gets raids, I'm not gonna play it. I don't want this to become an MMO. Because it's just skewing towards multiplayer. And sometimes I just want to play this game by myself. The moment you have a system like Raids in, it means you have to start scheduling stuff in with people. And like, I have a job in real life, man. I don't, I don't need a second job. 
Ooh. What did I just get? Ramaladin uses Magnum and Opus. Skills using this weapon deal increased damage per point of fury, but you lose two fury a second. This is a whirlwind thing. I'll keep it, but that's a whirlwind blade. <laughs> hey, why don't you go play whirlwind? You notice you're, you're using Hammer of the Ancients, may we suggest Whirlwind? Maybe at some point. I'll keep it. I just, just want to get all the quests. Events are super build dependent. I think events just skew towards multiplayer, period. It's also some... It's not just... It depends on the enemy types that it spawns. So I remember once that I got one where, you know, it was slight enemies within this circle. And they were all, um, Khazra Spearmen, so they were just hanging around the edge of the circle, and would never ever enter the circle. So I was just fucked. Like that, it was just, nah, you're gonna fail here. The enemy types are wrong, and you're playing a melee character. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'll, I'd say 90% of the time when I'm running around dungeons and I see one of these events pop up, I just run past it. It's just not worth my time. <laughs> Where are the bodies I can loot? <laughs> I want to get this quest and I don't have to come back to this dungeon. the start of the dungeon. I thought there'd be way more to s click on. Alright, well, let's just take it one room at a time. You know one of the big things is rune words from D2 and are highly likely. I mean, source... Citation required, because I've, I've heard that one pop up quite a bit, but... There's never really any evidence, it's kind of just like... Man, they'd be really stupid not to add it. It's like, yeah, that doesn't mean it's... that. I wouldn't call that highly likely. That's just like a, a fantasy D2 players really want to happen. I feel like that's like a Mandela effect thing. Unless there's some developer interview where they're like, yeah, that's coming in future, that's that's a grain of salt thing. Don't get me wrong, it would be cool, cool for it to happen. But riddle me this, rune words require the high level, <laughs> high level amount of sockets. I have yet to see a chess piece that has more than two sockets. For the concept of rune words to work, you need at least three sockets. On certain items. I think that's just too much of a fundamental shift.
I swear they said the same thing about D3 at some point. Like, people were, were saying, yeah, yeah, rune words are highly likely to be added, and they never were. I remember them being spoken about in a few interviews. They're on their minds, but yeah, but that's that's not quite the same as like, okay, yeah, we're working on it. You know what I mean? They say they say stuff like that all the time because something that you learn when it comes to marketing, because whether you like it or not, like BlizzCon is a marketing event. And so, they try not to say no. Instead, they'll say, Oh, it's on our minds, or we're looking into it. Or we're considering it. It's just... It rings better than just saying, nah. So until you kind of get this thing where, you know, the... They're talking about it being in the game actively, or that they're actively working on it. If they say actively working on it, that's better. But saying thinking about it or like, you know, it's on our mind, that's just hedging language. It's just so, you know, they get taught to speak that way. Never say no, just use language like that. So then the person feels like they've been heard, but you don't have to actually commit to anything. We have nothing to show today, but we're actively working on it. That's the answer where you'd be like, okay, so yeah, rune words are coming at some point in the future. Are there really no bodies in here? I might have to come back in here. Ugh. There's another one. Come on. Come on. Drop it. You found the quote. It's we're listening. We like rune words. They're cool. We don't have anything to announce as far. But if they're going to be in the game in the immediate future, we do think it's a cool idea. Yeah. That's very language hedging. It's, they, they don't use the words that they're working on it. They just acknowledge that it's a cool idea. You see, do you see what I mean? When you read between the lines, it's like, that's such a non-committal statement. It's just saying, yeah, we think rune words are cool. And then the problem with that is then, you know, and it does, I don't fault people for this. It's, you get excited about the games you have nostalgia for, and D2 is just one of those games, but... People treat that as like a, oh, confirmed. It's like, no, it's not, dude. They're just, this is just marketing talk. That sounds like a no. That just sounds like a, what we haven't started. We're not developing this right now. I mean, in future, if it, they might in future, but it's not something that I, I think was a foundation in this game to begin with. I think... What they did is took the, D the D3 formula and expanded upon it. And didn't layer any complexities. Aside from maybe just how the... You know, the skill tree and all that works. They really did that. But... At its core, this game is like... A large world with bounties and MMO aspects. I think that's where the emphasis went. Just take... D3, make it a, a somewhat MMO experience, and then just, you know, the usual cinematic stuff to make it, you know, look nice. I know this sounds very pessimistic of me and, like, I'm cynical, but I think when it comes to Blizzard, you kind of have to be. Modern day Blizzard, I should say. Alright, I'm not going to waste more time in this dungeon, I'm just going to have to come back for this quest later.
You're assuming anything big like that wouldn't show up till an expansion. Yeah, if if they're going to do something like that, it'll be an expansion for sure. It won't be for a while, but you know, to say that they're working on it, that's a stretch. They're not. That they're highly likely to be added, that's just romanticization at the end of the day. It might very well... It's like, if it does come to fruition one day, does that mean that at this point in time they were actively developing it and, you know, it was in their minds the whole time? Doesn't necessarily mean that. I'll leave this in here. Okay, uh, what dungeons are left? I've done this cluster, this one here. I think that's the last dungeon for this act, if I'm not mistaken. I do want this game to go further, it's just... I'm very pessimistic of it. At least in the short term. I think honestly the, the priority for the next six months until well, until the rest of the year is the battle pass and making sure that works and goes smoothly. And whatever they have planned for that. You don't want it to end up like Overwatch. Dude, it's gonna end up like Overwatch. Just consider the things that are mirrored in terms of monetization. I'm not sure it'll go to the extreme where Overwatch is apparently trying to get money for extra content. But the whole thing being like, uh, yeah, battle pass to battle pass in terms of a content trickle, probably gonna end up that way. You look at how this, uh, this, the way this game is described to investors, and the term live service comes into mind. And the way those, those things typically work is it's a content trickle, because they want people to come back and they want people to spend money. That's their ultimate objective. And you know, they're, they're a company, that like, that's what they want to do, but... Yeah. I, I don't want that. They went from campaign with hero customization to no customization, no campaign, to now paid episodic things whenever they decide. Yeah. Yep. I don't think this game will necessarily fall down to that level. But just, just watch, it's gonna be a thing where 
They just want it to be something where people come back for every battle pass and pay. That's effectively their goal. It might not be the goal of the people that, you know, love this series and um, the people hard at work on it that genuinely want to make a good game. This is the goal of the company that they work for. And ultimately, that's probably gonna come through before the well wishes of, like, the people working on it. But we'll see. The, the, the next year or so will reveal the true colors. I mean, what? It took Overwatch that long before it got to the point where they admitted, okay, yeah, uh... We're not doing what we said we were going to do. We just we just want money, please. Here's the thing. I think the biggest shakeup that can happen to this game is to keep an eye on Path of Exile 2. Now I know it's not quite the same thing. It's obvious that there's there's diff there's clearly differences be between the, what those two games are going to be. But you know there is a, a user base overlap. There just is. So I would imagine whatever the the schedule of PoE is going to be in terms of their sequel release will affect how um, they plan content for this game to some degree. Because they wouldn't want their player base going over to that for whatever reason. Market competition is a very good thing, exactly. So, whilst now they might be taking it easy and going, yeah, for the first battle pass, we'll just do the bare minimum. Maybe PoE announces something and then it's just like, oh shit, we have to change those plans or people are not going to play this and spend money. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. But... From a from a personal level, I mean, I'll play this game, but to me, it, it has to change beyond this like just go do bounties sort of gameplay and uh, dungeons having one of twelve objectives every time. It's just I I, I can't I can't sink 150 hours per character when it's just this. Like, I, I did this in Diablo 3. This one out, where is it? Marshall. Okay, it's active. So now, after casting a shout, the active cooldown on every other shout is reduced by 1.2 seconds. Okay, so now, ignoring the trap, let's just see how this feels in terms of fury generation. Okay, it, there's a little bit of a desync in terms of, uh, I mean, I would assume I have to keep level- oh, that's the one I'm gonna level up. If I'm doing Nightmare Dungeons, this is the one that I'm gonna have to level up. Because I imagine this is going to be the thing that keeps me- Ah, that's how it works, okay. 
so it'll make the other ones ready. Even though they're not. Okay. I mean, that's cool. But that can become like two seconds or something. Or even three. We'll see. That's definitely one I'm gonna have to prioritize. Oh yeah, it's been half an hour. I wonder if Bob's gonna get a decent rank still. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, right now, uh, the indirect... The indirect uh, range skill is the uh, the dust devil. You don't have control over it, but it does happen. I don't mind the barbarian not having ranged abilities. It's just there's something to be said about it. I think Taunt would have to get some kind of buff, where then you can pull stuff to you. Because, I mean, it works, but not as well as I would like it to work. As long as you address the problems of just scenarios where, oh, there's just a bunch of stuff, like, on the edge and you can never reach them and they're highly evasive. The Barbarian doesn't need to be ranged, it's just a case of, uh tightening up those situations where that stuff happens. You know what? I bet that's why people use uh, the other skill that I was reading. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the meta skill, because it lets you lit- it's the lunge attack or whatever it's called. Now that I say that. I just like Frenzy more. This feels better. I just like this ability more. I'm probably not gonna look at the meta stuff until, I don't know, like 70. I'll see how far off I was. Uh, uh, down there somewhere. That's exactly why, okay. Well, yeah. They just need to make taunt this thing that maybe for ranged enemies it just makes them move quicker towards the barbarian or some shit like that. Just let them get there sooner and let them be more likely affected by taunt. And then that's the problem solved. I know I make it sound very simple. There's other considerations, like what happens in the multiplayer sense. But fundamentally, that's the problem, is like, the Barbarian has to chase stuff. I haven't seen all the legendaries yet, so who knows? Probably. But that, but that's something where you have to, I believe that that's, that's not the answer, just because you're taking an item and you're dedicating a legendary power to fix a fundamental issue. It shouldn't be that way. 
Like, that's probably the cure now, but it's, it's such a bad cure. It needs to be something where you don't really need to do anything to your character beyond maybe taking, like, a, a passive or a... I guess, like, a skill modifier, if that makes sense. To resolve this whole thing of just, oh... Yeah, I kind of suck against ranged characters. One thing that kind of resolves it for me is just because I'm using maces, I stun a lot. So for uh, non-bosses and non-elites, it's fine. If I get a stun in, most likely the thing that I'm attacking isn't going to die because it just keeps chain stunning them. But it's still annoying to have to chase shit down. Um, where did you come from? Alright, let me see how many dungeons I have left now. You know what they, like, they should have made this the thing that shows you that dungeons are done, like, in general completely, but I, I figured it out after a while. Also, with help from a friend, is like the way this reads is if it has no icon, that means it's completed. If it has this chest icon, that means you haven't completed it. If it has a circle, that means another character has completed it, but this character hasn't completed it. So. Um, how many dungeons is that? One more somewhere. Ah. There. Alright, we'll go here. Ugh. After that, it's just one more act, and then I have all the aspects. <laughs> I'm doing all this hard work on this barbarian, so then any future character I choose to make... It's... It's handled, I can just get through it pretty quickly. You love the quests that make you do a dungeon. I think it's great that that happens, but I absolutely hate it just from a tracking perspective, because... Just the way you track things in this game, they, they encourage you to go 100% shit, but the way you track stuff is just... It's very clunky. I'll, I'll say that. There's a large list of things that bother me about how things are tracked. It just wasn't well thought out in terms of the UI. Hey, we want to incentivize players to visit every single dungeon and everything, but we're not going to give them a way to track what they've done. We're not going to put locations on our map at all, like... It's just gonna be this map that's blank. And then they actually have to remember that this area is referred to as the Scouring Sands. So then when they look up guides like 80 hours later, they need to remember the fact that this area was called that and not be able to look it up on a map. It's just a bunch of little things that just add up to a large problem. Oh, the, I think there's a quest here. I'll do this event. But there's uh, something that drops from bodies here. There it is. Cool.
I think the only thing that is tracked correctly and well are the Lilith Shrines. Because it is clear which ones you have gotten. The only thing, I guess, between characters, but that's not a big deal. Like, it'd be cool if, oh, once you've found it on one character, then the other characters know where they are. Oh, this is one of these I wasn't paying attention. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna lose the event. Most likely. Stuff just keeps getting in my way of picking shit up! I missed by one soul. It was just so many bodies, I just could not go and touch the actual souls. Alright, that's fine. Okay, let me mark this quest as done, so I know it's been done. Okay, Ravenous, Necrolite's Cache, alright. So how many quests do I have left in this act? Let me just see if it matches my... My tracker. My manual tracker! Uh, 41 out of 44, so there's 3. So I need to do... An Arden Lawful Order. Strayed from the Path. And... An Unusual Ore. Which, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. I've never gotten the unusual ore one. That one just seems to be something that, in every act, I have that one to do. The, the drop rate for it is insanely low. I don't know why. But okay. Alright, um, this is the last dungeon for this area. Alright, so I've tracked it correctly. There needs to be a tracker for the quests you haven't done yet. I think it's something that maybe once you hit a certain point, it needs to give you that, but... The way that I see it, I know why they don't want to show the quests you haven't done yet, because then it's like, where's the sense of discovery then if it lays everything out? But like, you know, if people are curious, they'll follow a guide. They'll look up, okay, what quests am I missing? And they'll look up a list of quests for Act 1. So when that happens, there just needs to be a way to go, okay, what have I done? So then I can find out what I'm missing. I don't think they'll ever show what you haven't done. That just... It's, it's a bit weird to do that. It's like, imagine every game you played at the start of it had a list of a thousand things. Hey, you haven't done this yet. Like, the way it, it typically works is... They'll have a list of stuff you've done. So then when you go follow a guide or something to try and figure out what you haven't done, you're able to do it. The problem is in your situation, you're missing 3 out of the 35 and you have no way of discerning which ones you're already done. Right. And the way to do that... Like, you don't need to... The problem is... Is... That you want to know what you haven't done. I get that. I have the same problem. But the solution isn't to show what you haven't done. Because then, at the outset, when you start a game, you know, start a new character... It's just showing you a large list of shit you haven't done. The way to do it is this list that builds up, and it's just like, imagine I could click this, and at this point now, it's like, okay, this is what's completed, and there's a list of 70 or whatever. When I start something, there'll be, you know, there's no, there's no list, because I haven't done anything. 
so I know there's everything to do. You really only start caring about what you missed out on when, you know, there's one or two things left, and that's where you're following a guide. You go, okay, what are, what are the list of quests that are available? Let me look up a guide. Much like I look up a build, let me look up the guide on what quests are available. Okay, okay, let me look at my list. Oh, I see, these are the two that I'm missing. All right, I'll go look for them. There's just never really been a game that goes, okay, we're gonna show the player everything they haven't done. Like, it just doesn't work that way. They show you what you've, what you've completed, so then when you do follow some external resource later, you can figure out what you haven't done. So then when people are playing this for the first time, they don't get spoiled by stuff that they haven't done yet. Imagine one of the quests said, you know, kill... Kill the big boss, and the big boss was a spoiler, and then they just had that as an objective in their list on day one. It just doesn't make sense to do that. Instead it would be, they wouldn't tell you about the big boss, and then when you kill the big boss, it'll say, yep, kill the big boss, tick. And then at the end you go, okay, well, what haven't I done? Oh, I killed the big boss, okay, well, I don't have to worry about that. So what's actually missing? The weird part is they sort of show that with the challenges list. Yeah, I think that's just... That's more of a coincidental thing than an intended way to track it. They came up with a list of achievements, but in no way did they think that that was going to be the way to track quests. Because the... The thing with achievements... They work on the first character you make, but then the second character you make, it's just like... I, I believe they... they don't have their individual, you know, achievements. Or challenges, whatever you want to call them. So it's like, that works for the first character you make. I see a... Uh... No, it's a shadow thing. It's fine. But yeah, I wish I had realized the quest thing sooner. I have an idea as to what's missing in Act 1, but I don't really have a way to prove it. But at least... Act 3, 4, and 5 I tracked correctly, so I know exactly what I'm missing. so much if they just didn't tie rewards to the thing because <laughs> you know you want those paragon points so you really do want to 
figure out what you haven't done. I just don't want that thing following me, that's all. I wasn't gonna stick around and beat that pack. I wish that the ultimate count was classified as a shout. Uh, it, they shout. I got the shout to transform. <laughs> It'd be cool if all of these abilities were, were shouts. the other way. I do miss, and I'm sure this has been brought up a thousand times, just the transparent map so you can still see what you're doing. Oh, they're kind of in a formation, that's weird. You like how the barrier taking damage bucks on damage effects? It is neat. I mean, credit where credit is due, the combat does feel good, and the things associated with it. It's just more, I guess, in the, the conversation of, you know, me playing a certain gameplay loop for 150 hours, that's where most of my critique comes from. Not so much the casual experience or, like, short-term experience. It's more 150 hours and then me playing this game again and doing it again. For another 150 hours, you know? Because I asked myself the question, so in Monk and Diablo 3 I sank like a thousand hours into that class. Do I see myself doing that with any class right now? No. And it's not, it's got nothing to do with the classes, it's just where the gameplay loop lies. I just can't see myself playing a character a character over and over again in the current system. It's just I'll play a lot of it, don't get me wrong. It's just at a certain point I know that it, I just I'll get bored of it. Just because effectively it is bounties and it's just the same 12 objectives in a dungeon. Always smart to buy surprise in what would I like them to add? I mean, it's one of those things where the answer that I'm going to give, it's very fluff. Um, but, you know, let's let's start at, at a top level as like more than 12 things to have to do in a dungeon for one. I think that is probably the largest pain point is a, a lot of things are just, <sighs> let's go through them. Take, take object from A and go place it at B, then go from B to C and then come back to B. And sometimes it's, it even goes to D. 
Another one is, which is just straight up a bounty from D3. Free the prisoners. The worst one of all is kill all the enemies on this particular area. Just crawl the entire map, kill everything. That's just, eh. That was, that, I hated those bounties in D3. So, it, I don't know, man. It just needs to mix things up. Like, even, I like it when I have to go kill a big boss. I don't mind the ones where you have to go hunt down a particular elite or something, but something that had, like, some... Some sort of thing where you're running around and you're just killing stuff and, you know, the killing stuff is optional. But there's just some some goal that isn't just a fetch quest. It's very hard to kind of suggest something because I just know that what I don't like is, is obvious. What I like, that's for them to come up with something that is beyond just a simple fetch quest, man. Um... I mean, build diversity is another thing. It's just like, I get it. There's only a set number of builds right now. And that'll come at, uh, that'll be a problem that'll get resolved over time. As the, I'm sure they'll add more aspects and more powers. Um, the rune words thing would be nice, but I'm not going to kid myself with that one. Um, one thing that I'm surprised they didn't do in D3 was just like... When I, when I heard that they were coming out with set dungeons, I thought it was going to be something where, you know, for playing a particular build, you kind of went into this dungeon, and then it would, there would be a thing where you'd be rewarded for playing in that play style, and you do things to compete against other people playing that play style, and you know, the rewards are more likely to relate to that play style. But the content was going to be harder. That's how I thought set dungeons were going to work in D3. But no, they didn't. So I don't know. Something that would be like... An experience that's specific for my class. And I know I'm talking about single player here a lot, but... I just feel like there are, there are scenarios where... I just feel like I'm being punished for picking the class that I picked. And I don't think there's enough of the opposite, if that makes sense. Like, scenarios where I'm rewarded for picking the class that I picked. Or... Just challenged in a way that, you know, feels rewarding and not punishing. You'd like more world content? Yeah, more world content would be nice. Um... That, that goes down to my feedback of just everything feels like it's just bounties again. It, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. I just know that I can only convey what I, I know is repetitive and I know what I don't like. It's just one of those things where like, you know, there's the old saying from the dude that, um, made cars. He said, if I asked people what they wanted, we'd have faster horses instead of faster cars. And I feel like I'd only suggest a faster horse in this regard. Like, it's up it's up to them to come up with a car, man. I can only really suggest a faster horse at this point. They need to innovate. Okay. Uh... So all the dungeons are done in this area. Let's see what quests I can pick up. So there was one... Yeah. I'll tell you one positive I like. That the gems in this game, they're not so clear-cut. Compared to D3 where it was like... There was absolutely no reason to select certain gems. Zero reason. That's not the case here. I'll give them credit where credit are due. That is good that they've done that, but I feel like it could go one step further. I'm not going to suggest systems, because I don't know what, what systems would exactly be involved, but like, you know, just doing more of that, where just... There's choice. I, those nights... Not two weeks ago, we broke bread with them. Now they are... A bigger, longer, laser invasion, more objectives to kill the... 
More objectives than kill for silver bar, yeah. That is honestly a biggest grab. It feels like sometimes you're on an uphill battle because you chose Neko in a sick situation. Whereas if, if it was anything else, it wouldn't be an issue at all. And that happens extremely often. Exactly. But there's, but I find that, like, the scenarios where it's the opposite. Like, you feel like, oh man, I'm Necro. And I'm doing something because I'm Necro. And I'm doing something really well. And it's just... Maybe... I don't know how to how to really uh, deal with that. Like, Barbarian has similar problems. Like, there, there's so many scenarios where I'm just like, okay, fuck me for picking a melee class, huh? But there hasn't really been a thing where I'm like, okay, I'm so glad I picked a melee class. I think every character has that to some degree. And that's good, you know, you should feel like that um, there's certainly a weakness that your character has and should overcome. But conversely, you should also have a sense of feeling that, oh man, this is where this character is like, it excels. But I, I feel like that's just not as apparent. You know what I mean? It's like, when someone's doing well, everyone's doing well. That's how it feels like. But when someone's doing poorly, that person really feels it. Okay, I got another one. And this comes down to diversity. Now, this is this is good because the Barbarian has this innately. But, um... Other classes do not. At least not to my knowledge. So... You know, what's cool about the Barbarian is that you kind, you kind of have incentive to use specific weapons, right? And, I mean, in, in a larger sense. I'm sure there's, like, some minor incentives to use one thing over another. But the Barbarian's one is, is an example where it really shines. It's like, you know... For using maces, I... It complements my stuns. There's just... There's systems here that kind of go, okay... When an axe drops, I don't see it as just a weapon dropping and I'm looking at the stats. I see it as, this is an axe dropping. Um, I'm looking for axes because I chose to play this way. And that is excellent for the Barbarian. But for other classes, it's kind of just like, oh. Um, cool. It's a one-handed weapon that dropped. It's a two-handed weapon. And that's where the complexity ends. Or it's like a one-hander and a, and a source. But there's no real reason to pick, like, one source type over another. Or, like, you know, D2 had the concept of, uh item classes, where, you know, you'd have light, medium, and heavy, and that, not that there was a lot of intricacy behind, you know, those classes, but at least there was a difference to them. Whereas in here, it's kind of just like, well, yeah, at the end of the day, you're getting a chest piece, it doesn't matter which one, you're just looking at the stats, but you don't really care about the chest piece type. And, you know, your weapon... The Barbarian's the, the, you know, the example where this is cool. I do care about the weapon type. I make- I have made a choice here to go maces. For- for my weapons. And that's cool, but for other classes, like, you know, it's just like, uh, I'm getting a one-hander or a two-hander. I'm getting a one-hander and a source. I'm getting a one-hander and a shield. But I don't care what kind of one-hander it is. I don't care what kind of source it is, because there's no- there's no complexity there. There's no depth. You know what I mean? That, I think, it, like, if they were to do more things like the Barbarian, like this shit, where picking a particular weapon or source or something just alters how you play things, it makes things more strategic. And it makes loot more important and more, uh... You know, it makes it feel good when you find something you've been looking for. You want more of that feeling. And I just feel like, you know, the drops, it's just... We're going by color, basically. Again. When it could be more than that. Um, so, the, I th there's, there's a concrete example I can give where I feel like it could be better. Um... Sorry, I'm just going through my quest tracker. I might be muted because I'm tapped out. 
I tried to click this quest to mark it as done or acquired, but it just unclicked another one. Why? Oh, that's why. I need to zoom in, because they're, like, on a very similar spot. Because we have zero movement skills without investing an entire building to blossomness, you get left out behind a multiplayer to the point where you're walking into the aftermath of every fight, and the icing on top is that you have zero way to break crowd control that isn't on a 24 second cooldown. So if you chose to invest in movement and get frozen, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. I mean, that one, it's, it's a bit harder to do because... I think every Diablo game has suffered in that regard to like, there's always one class that has the upper hand when it comes to movement based skills. There just always is. Um, I think the ant, it's kind of a, an annoying answer, but it's like, it, there shouldn't be a large advantage. Yeah, it comes with its own problems. Because either way, like like you said, it comes down to like you're gonna have to pick a skill to keep up. So the way that I've played this, I kind of just not. I don't really have a movement skill. The only movement skill I have, kind of indirectly, and it's not because I chose it as a movement skill. It just so happens to have it. Is just. One of the cries, I think it's Warcry, has uh, movement speed increase. But it's not a gap closer, it's not like a, a giant thing. Like, I'm not using lunge or whatever that skill is that people are using. Kind of chose to let that go. But I can definitely recognize spots where I do get left behind a little as well. I'm not sure they'll ever resolve that one completely for every single class, beyond just making sure every class has some form of keeping up, but uh, it has its own problem where then you have a dedicated skill just for that, which, eh. Eh. <laughs> Let hell take them back. In better times, I would invite you into my home and honor you. I enjoyed Necromancer, but... Because uh, I played it a little bit in the, uh... These coins are all I can offer you. The stress test. But I saw immediately, I was like, hmm... This is gonna have its problems when you play through. It's not that it's not fun. The gameplay is very fun, but I kind of just saw... That I think... Heading into the late game, that there were going, there were going to be problems. Out of, I didn't play Druid, but you know, every other class, I didn't get that sense. I just had this this feeling with the Necromancer, like, hmm, this is fun, but I feel like this is going to run into problems later. Okay, so an unlawful order. There's apparently a quest here. Let's see. I have been coping that you get the teleport from 3 or you spend health to teleport. Yeah, but... That's- that'll only happen in like an expansion where every class is like getting an extra skill or something. I mean, could potentially get added, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be in like a patch in a month or something, just like out of nowhere. Okay, hey, we added the skill for Necromancers, because we recognize they need a movement skill, so only Necromancers are getting an extra skill. That's just, it's not gonna happen that way. It's gonna be, hey, this is uh, our first major expansion one year later. Every class has gotten a new skill. Check out Necromancer's one, where time. they can now finally teleport, to some degree, with blood. So, 
if, if that's gonna happen, it's gonna happen in that context, most likely. Oh, the, the cross isn't here. Okay, why is it not here? Unlawful order. I'm gonna look. Okay, let me look. Unlawful order D4. I wanna see what causes this quest, because sometimes there's a requirement. Meet Edgar in Chaldean Bazaar. Okay. So that's the first requirement. See what I mean? Okay, I'm like trying to ascertain, okay, where's the Chaldean Bazaar? Oh, wait, nothing is named on the map, so I don't know what the Chaldean Bazaar is and where it is and where I need to travel to. This is one of those things that it's not that they didn't consider it; it's that they they were like, "Yeah, we'll add this later." This is like on a on a low priority thing. I think they were they were stressed for time on this one for sure. Okay, well, this is the Imperial Palace. We just gotta wait until it changes to the bazaar. Residential district. I'm not ready. I mean, otherwise, I'll just go do, do dungeons in Act 5. Chaldeum. Okay, so now. Where's the bazaar? That's the garrison. Don't tell me it was where I was. But he wasn't there. The gates of Chaldeum. Okay, hang on. No, this is it. Okay, so somewhere here. It's probably where I was. I'm not ready yet. I mean, otherwise, the other one is... It's the mining node one, which... Ugh, ugh. <laughs> uh, uh. I don't want to do that one. Dude, go away. Okay, let me just make sure, just for sanity's sake. Hey, Messiah, how's it going? How's things? Now, see, that's Road to Chaldeum. Okay, so hang on, let me read this quest. It's near the dungeon. Okay, so from what I'm seeing on the map, there's a spot here. So the guy that I'm looking for should be here, but he's not. Uh, this is where he should be. <laughs> the person I'm looking for should be here, but he's not. It's 
so uh, give up, I guess. We either didn't spawn or I don't know. Right, so there's two side quests. One of them is I need to just click mining nodes. Um, what's in the dry steps? Let me look at the dry steps. Dry steps. What did I leave out in the dry steps? Okay, dry steps might be something that's achievable. If I go to here. Ugh. I bet one of them is loot. Nice. Okay. Ah, oh, no. I just read them. Okay. Um. <laughs> Two of them are looting ones. But then there's one here, hopefully. Let me hover over it. Yeah, it's... In the name of love, it unlocks after the campaign, so this one should be it. Yep, cool. Alright, there we go. Okay. In fact, I do. There's another artifact I've heard of, but haven't yet had the chance to pursue... Have you uh, played Diablo yet, Messiah? This guy was a real butcher, and he eventually passed his skills with a blade along with the cleaver itself to his daughter, Haliun. Following Haliun's death and suspecting a darkness in the cleaver, the mages managed to get a hold of it and lock it away in the Whispering Vault. The vault was long since raided and the mages driven out but I've hope it's still buried in one of the chests they're in. Okay. Ah, where over the? Oh, it's in a dungeon. That's and I got grim favors for it. All right, that works. It's good timing. You had to confess you're kind of addicted. It's good. Glad to hear you're enjoying it. I need time to do that. It is fun. Did you go the bear build? I need more time. kind of at the point where I'm either deciding on like continuing this further or just trying another class but for now like I want to see this get a bit stronger Druid seems like a lot of fun when you put it together. I've heard a lot of people say that the Druid's decent. It's just a cl I think it's the only class that I haven't really played properly in any Diablo game. That's the other thing about this that I, I think in terms of improvement. Given what I've experienced so far, I don't think I would have the balls to play hardcore. Because I think of so many scenarios where it was just like a... It would depend on the class, but I think certain classes are going to struggle with hardcore. I mean, I haven't died in a very long time. 
because my characters reached its comfort zone. But early on, man, there were times where it was just, it was the struggle bus. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've played this a lot. You can see my playtime by um, how many hours I've streamed this on Twitch. I can find that out pretty easily. Oh no, but then I still have- no, you know what, it'd be like, if you add up my VODs on YouTube, there we go. But, yeah, I mean... I still think over time... The late game has to become something more than what it is now for it to keep my attention. Oh, I don't need to go that way. Wait, the cl oh. What? Oh, that is... <laughs> it's telling me to go outside. Okay, that's where I got confused. I was like, oh, the, the cleaver's over there. It's not. It's just... For some reason, telling me to go outside. That's... that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to see playtime somewhere. Maybe here? No? I don't know. Diablo 3 had it. There'll, there'll be a spot to see, like, a breakdown. You can't in game. Oh, so it's like a battle net for a whole thing. Gotcha. That's kind of surprising you can't see it in game, like a breakdown of your classes and who you've played the most. Alright, there's the cleaver. the uh the whispering tree you have to use a third party site for it oh <laughs> oh you mean like most of the other stuff when it comes to tracking stuff for this game you have to use a third party site that would be on point Want to track your quest progression? Third party site. Want to track how much time you sunk into this game? Third party site. Quickly, it's been half an hour. Just 
travel to the vault. Alright, cool. Hey! <laughs> Let me through. Alright, cool. Quick dungeon's a good dungeon. You guys have clearly played this more than me. I've only finished the campaign. Yeah, I guarantee you I'm not going to play the game as much as that. <laughs> not when I have Zelda and... If I really want to start another lengthy game, Final Fantasy 16. They'll probably get to a point where I'm only going to play it if someone else wants to play it with me. They probably skipped the feature to make journos not feel bad about life choices. Nah, I just think... I know that was a joke, but... Uh, just a lot of the stuff that you see that's missing is just... It was not prioritized. There's so many things. There's a lot of little things that just seem to be missing. In terms of UI or tracking. There's a lot. She was corrupted by wild jealousy. No doubt the work of the cleaver. And inevitably offed every last partner and paramour. Then, in order to keep them together forever... Shaka's she most likely coming with leaderboards. So that would be the time to do it. Oh. I think the quest one should have been there from the beginning, but whatever. That means these poor souls will never truly find rest. Ah, uh, well, at least you brought the premium feature me, 10 bucks. So How about premium subscription 10 bucks a month, please? Victims. No, a one off cost? Get out of here. We're talking live services. Can't be a service if you only pay once. I think if there was to be stash space done, it'll probably be like a a battle pass reward or something like that. Huh, the other quest didn't trigger. Alright, cool. So this one has... It seems, this seems to be the thing that every act has two quests missing, ultimately. Two quests missing. Oh, yep, two quests missing. Two quests missing. Two quests missing. <laughs> Three quests missing. What's this one over here? Let's look at, at the final act. Um, how was our... Uh, loot mining nodes. Don't want to do that. Loot from corpse. Interact with dead bodies. So it's all looting bodies. Should you follow the golden icons first, or... Um, there's two ways to play this. You can either follow the golden icons and do the main quest. And once you're done with the main quest, you can kind of get to what I'm doing, which is 
the late game stuff and some people prioritize that because they just want to get to this where you know they're doing um stuff that earns them loot and what's considered late game or you could do what i did which is um you know when you go to an act so let's say you're in act one i try to do these objectives that are up top so you know get all the waypoints do the uh what are they called the red things the red skull icons i'm tired i think i need to pick me up i've already forgotten the, the word <laughs> stronghold strongholds um side quests uh it, the little star thing is just filling out the map and finding every spot on the map dungeons and altars of lilith which yeah the incentive here is when you do that you know you get these bonuses to characters but you can always do that later so it just depends how you want to play it how you play things if you like searching every single area before you move on with the main quest like you know you want to clear this whole thing out or most of it, you'll get rewarded for it. Or if you're someone that just wants to get to the point where the whole map is unlocked and you just want to go do the, like, you know, the late game stuff, the stuff that everyone's talking about right now, you just rush the golden markers to get through the main quest. So just whatever you, whatever you feel like doing, there's no wrong answer here. However, I think most people lean towards just getting the campaign out of the way. <laughs> Um, just because they want to do the late game stuff, because that's pretty much the thing that keeps interest after, like, a thousand hours of this game. The campaign is something that no one is going to be talking about in a year from now. Um, actually, before I, uh, I go down the rabbit hole, let me just get, go to the fridge real quick and get myself a drink, because you know, I've been sitting here for a couple of hours, and I need, I need something to pick me up. So give me, like, 30 seconds. bottle of coke in the fridge, I'll finish it. <sighs> Caffeine and sugar, why not? Okay. Alright, I gotta loot dead bodies. Take this spot slow. What? What? Huh? What? <laughs> I don't know if anyone else gets this with just voice lines going off randomly when they shouldn't be. Okay, uh, Heart's Burden. Okay, let me click that off. See, those ones are straightforward. It's just, I don't know why, but the Mining Node one... 
Ah euh, ouais, j'en ai... Yeah. The mining node one just... I've never seen it drop. Sorry. Um, there's apparently going to be like this, uh, the supermarket here that's going to start selling a bunch of American snacks starting Wednesday, so it's just like, there's going to be lines for that shit. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go, like, take a look, but just, I don't, maybe it's a once-off thing, or maybe they're, they're going to do it as like a regular offering. But the way you get access to that stuff here is like the specialty stores that import and they charge a, a premium on them. Obesity. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are sweet snacks and thankfully I don't have much of a sweet tooth, so. No, I'd, I'd rather my spicy or salty or savory stuff. But, you know, in, in moderation. I think people are just gonna line up for that stuff. Don't know your export stuff with how much more health conscious everyone else is. I mean, I can't do that. Yeah, I don't know. It's not large chains doing this. It's just usually little individual shops that somehow get their hands on them. But there's some stuff that you just can't buy here just because the ingredients aren't allowed here. <laughs> oh yeah, this one's like, uh, I gotta loot bodies thing. Pointing loosely to here, so I guess let's just have a look, but otherwise I'm, I'm gonna do dungeons in this act. I think what makes it easier is just, just the snacks that we have here. There's stuff that I really, really enjoy, and... It's a case of the premium that they charge for American snacks. I feel like it's just always, nah. I'm very content with the things that I, I enjoy already. It's like, that stuff isn't a once-off novelty. Even if they had them on a shelf readily available, I still would probably stick to the stuff that I've chosen. Just because that's what I enjoy. I will say, though, like, Cheez-Its are probably the one that I would, if they were to make them readily available on a, uh, I wouldn't say cheap, but cheaper than what they are at specialty stores, I'd, I'd pick them up. Otherwise, more or less the same.
say that's go hard. They do. Oh, uh, man. Just the first time I had them, the, that box just disappeared. Pretty quickly. And then another time I, I didn't, um, I didn't find them, but they were cheese nips. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is probably just a competing brand. Probably similar. No, they are not. Not even, not even remotely comparable. I learned that lesson very quickly. Just go to the goal. One of twelve goals. This one is destroy the object. Could be a statue, could be a ball of blood, could be a totem. Explosion of blood. I don't know how many died in one hit there, but that was just, that was beautiful. I learned that running away and then turning around every now and then to just maul everything is the best way to play this. satisfying about the slam and then just seeing things explode. Back for the other one. Should hopefully be in this corner.
Alright, cool. I just gotta go to the objective. Got a bunch of sigils, don't I? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll do some, but just not yet. Um, glyph cleaver. I haven't seen some of these new glyphs. What are they? Uh, so I'm using Crusher. Cleaver. Uh, while wielding an axe, critical strike. Okay. That one seems interest. That one seems interesting. I feel like I could do something very useful with that. Hang on. Because isn't there a passive... Where is it? Not that one. I saw it somewhere. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, the ablating effect, but then... No, or is it? I swear there was one that had a chance to proc bleeding on enemies. In general. Yeah, when enemies hit you, they take thorns as bleeding. So, like... Well, it says additional. But could potentially get into a situation where just by having that applied... As long as they're bleeding, they don't have to be... Because the way that reads... Like, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. The way that reads is... Let me read it again. So as long as they're bleeding, it doesn't have to be about a huge amount, but if they pluck, prop bleeding, then this could synergize with the fact that I'm trying to reduce the cooldown of my shouts. So between these two, it could be a case of just, as long as shit is hitting me, this just increases the whole thing of, um, just getting things to... to hit me and bleed and then reduce cooldowns. I mean, this is something that's for way later. But I think that might be the way I play it. Okay. Just, just a guess. So what does this need? This needs strength. I mean, I'll look at this later, but at a surface level, I think that's probably what I'll do. Because there's a few effects that, um, it works off bleeding, and I think that's the way I could get bleeding damage without actually... 
um, getting skills that actively do it, just kind of passively have the chance to have things take bleed damage. Which, honestly, if that if that works out, that's a cool way for thorns to be useful. I don't think I've seen thorns ever be useful beyond like a necromancer build. Oh yeah, no, let me do this one. This one's closer. What is this one? Skills grant damage reduction. That's a good one. Um, for four seconds. I mean, the one I have here is better, but I'm all for rebalancing stuff out. I'll stash it for now. I mean, this isn't my, like, trying to form another build around items. I just noticed I have one of these. There we go. Alright. They sure know how to, like, make a... <laughs> I see this exclamation and it bothers me. I just want to get rid of it. What are you trying to ex Oh, there's the... You mean this thing that was already... Something that didn't really... Didn't really gel with me? It's just armor. Anyway. Exclamation mark on. The horse mount is important. <laughs> Why findings drunk? Yeah. Ah, did an update. All right. Uh, just. There we go. Now it's got the correct file. I think I understand now why people only, um... put one point into the generator ability. Because I was doing that initially, but then I changed. I got asked, like, why I had more than one point in that. Ah, uh, yeah, this one. This is the one that feels like too much of a bounty. But at least it's only two bloodstones, could be worse. Go from B. Then go find A, then go back to B, then go find C, then go back to B. And then go find D, and go back to B. I need time to do that. because this was in an enclosed space. We're all funneled into this corridor, which is nice.
That one's not bad. Honestly, that's pretty good. Um, I mean, it didn't get any plus to skills, but the percentage damage reduction is good. If I was to swap any stat, it'd probably be the real life regen. I already got enough out of the helm. I mean, the, the, the boot's comparable. Pretty good drops, both of them. And that other corridor. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Temporary. I guess I'm heading towards the legendary node now. And I'll connect the gate that way. Please just be here. <laughs> I need okay, there it is.
How many dungeons do I have left after this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought I was closer than that. I didn't really do any dungeons in this area. I was kind of tunnel visualing the end of the campaign quite a bit. Lords, it should be straightforward. It looks like they're just going to be in a pocket. Ah, uh, unless it gets complicated. Hang on. Maybe it's going to expand out here. One more time. My fellow crusaders, I think for myself for once. It will no doubt spend my doom. I can smell death in the air. It will come for me soon. Pretty much done here. Come on, out of the way. Time to do that. Do I need to go back? Yeah, I'll go back.
I think the boots are good to use, so let's see how I can bring them in. I'll see what stats I can reroll. Where is Mystic? There you are. Okay, I swear I put a, a marker down, but okay. It's gone now, I guess. Alright, what... Where are you from? what... What stats do I have on this? No, I have... Yeah. I'll see for myself. How oh, and I've got the coin to leave. Seems like anywhere's better than here. Willpower... Shadow resistance... Movement speed after killing on the late... Shrine buff duration... Dodd's chance. Okay, so... I mean, the only thing I, I would say is, like, I don't want to lose willpower. I... Maybe? Yeah, probably that start. Mm-mm. Ooh, I only got nine. Okay. I'll do one more. Plus eight to all stats, that's a good way to average it out. Take that. Another happy customer. I'll lose willpower, but at the same time it's just it's fine. I don't think it's going to throw anything out of balance. That looks worn. I can fix it. Use it well. I need to start selling more. <laughs> Money is an issue. That's a deal. Don't hurt yourself. Okay. Uh sacrifice bonuses. Yeah. Let's get that one for Necromancer. That's just going to serve that playstyle, so. I gotta keep looting dead bodies and this, I have to remember, otherwise I'll never get those two quests. Ah. 
I think they just need to get rid of this. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but like those that have played Diablo 3. I hated anything involving just getting a large floor and having to kill everything on it. It, it just, it sucked. So there'd always be some enemy in some random corner and you're just doing a lot of walking around the map. I, just, I really did not like it when that would pop up. And I was very surprised to see it again in this, along with extra health, which is like something they got rid of in D3 as well. Because people found it annoying. I think it works fine in an enclosed space where the map is not that big and you don't have to go through, like, branching paths or anything. You had that bug out on you more than once. It didn't spawn the correct number of mobs to kill. Oof. That sucks. Oh, I soft-locked a, a stronghold of... <laughs> from something similar. ordered us to cleanse Fort Eridu. At first I thought this was a mistake. There wasn't anything in the old fort. What happens when you open a chest, spawns a group of mobs, and the number you need to kill also goes up. And it just breaks the map. Yeah. Maybe because I've just been actively avoiding events, because just I find the mastery objectives just stupid and not worth the time. That's probably why I haven't come across such a thing yet. I just find this right now. It'd be a completely different story if, like, let's say there was some benefit to finding the whole map. Like, you got some achievement, or maybe there's an incentive, like there's an elite somewhere on the map that gives you really good loot, and that's why it makes it worth it exploring the whole map. But there isn't anything like that. It's just forcing you to just take longer on an area that there's no real reason to explore the whole map, you know? <laughs> you there, help, no thanks. That's exactly... exactly what I say every time. No thanks, or just pass. My favorite reaction is when one of the uh, the NPCs is about to die, and then they just go, "Oh no! Oh no!" Oh no! Oh no! I'm about to die. Oh no, I am dying. Did it really just tell up? No, it, it didn't dodge it, good. I it teleported before I got the hit in. Need more time.
You know, the problem is when it comes to looking for gear is that you're looking for gear. I find that I'm always cursed when I'm actively looking for something, but then the moment I stop looking for it, that's when I find it. So just swap builds for a while and watch watch that you find the item. But just put it in the furthest recesses of your mind. The secret to finding it is stop looking. I almost believe that to be true. There's something to be said about games not dropping what you're looking for. Especially if uh, they want you to keep playing them. Uh, it's not to say this game does that. I'm sure it doesn't. But it feels that way. Okay, I'll do a couple more dungeons and then I think it's time to move on. Let me pick which one. Uh, Meteor. Cooldown Restore. Yeah, that one. I'm sure it'll be useful for the Sorceress. can't do that here. Free the prisoners. Alright. The most bounty feeling objective. That sounds like more of an appropriate reaction of when you're about to die. Um, so the enemies in the next room are, are glitched. <laughs> they uh, they can't move. They can't seem to move. Cool. I just want to click this. Thank you. Okay, quick objective is a good objective. Ah, oh, collect the worm key.
problem is this is the thing they did on purpose is they didn't want the game to feel too much like thievery because the moment you do that you know the people that left playing the game because it was uh not d2 they'll they'll realize more sooner that this is d3 again It's already open. has. that um I'll probably just go straight to the next one but yeah this is gonna be the last dungeon I do it's getting to that point where I'm just, I just feel like I've been doing bounties for ages okay plus I should probably start whatever else I had planned for today Usually when I'm playing by myself, it's like two to three hours tops per play session. Before I start, like, feeling like I've just been doing bounties. I am sad this dungeon didn't count the first time I ran through it in campaign, somehow.
Okay, that's the animus one. and snakes. Do I get the title of snake now? No. It's slinking and charmer. So I could give one of the characters like the title of the charmer. Have this character the title of Magic Voice. Because you know, the build is screaming, basically. problems. It just keeps evading my attacks. Alright, go. Thing. Not 
behind. That don't be mine. Really interesting. Uh... That's a deal. Just looking at what I have. Alright. Well, uh, I've had my fill of this for now. But, uh, I'm gonna take a small intermission before I start the next thing. Uh, yeah. If you're here for this, thanks for tuning in. Or if you're watching later on YouTube, if you enjoyed. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around to the end and consider button clicking algorithm stuff. Whatever I usually say. Uh, but yeah, uh, be sure to let me know if you want to see more of this, as that lets me know people are enjoying this stuff in general. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna take a break from it. It's been like three hours, so... I'm getting to the point where now almost all the dungeons are done. It's just, what... Nine are left. If I'm not wrong. It's this monstrous effort is almost done. <laughs> and then any other character I start in future is just gonna benefit from this hard work, so... It's cool. <laughs>